Hello, I'm Benny Westside, and welcome to the Crash Course for Red Goblin. For the first time ever, I am recording a Crash Course video on stream, so chat's going to be here. We might get some commentary, it might get spicy, but I, I'm excited for it, I'm looking forward to it. This is actually the third video we're recording this stream. We did two Crucible videos. Um, one of them's going to come out tomorrow, the other one's going to come out the day after. Uh, so, watch out for those. Alright, uh, what we're doing here in this video is we're going to go over Red Goblin's abilities, T4 upgrades, uh, gear and leveling, ISO classes. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, and then at the end I'm going to wrap up with a quick recap. And my goal today is help you make more informed decisions uh, when you buy him or when you unlock him down the line via uh, whichever type of event. Oh, actually, we know with his event, he's going to be the February month long, so no need to be cryptic. Um, yeah, so uh, I, hope, uh, I hope this is helpful. Let's start with his abilities, which is... Uh, my favorite part to start and I, I prefer starting with the passive this is a hefty passive so get ready Scarlet Shredder uh, on spawn he's gonna gain one charge uh, it doesn't say here but it looks like he is capped at one charge uh, so he can't gain another charge unless he loses it uh, on spawn he's gonna apply defense up for two turns and deflect to deflect to self and all hive mind allies. That's a uh, very nice protection. In raids, he's gonna apply taunt for two turns to the highest health hive mind ally, also on spawn. Uh, his protection mechanic, he's a protector. His protection mechanic is different than most. Uh, what he does is he sort of decentralizes the damage. He keeps dispersing it and pushing it towards whoever has the most bulk at that current point and then he he pulls the taunt when it gets shaky so it's an interesting mechanic he doesn't gain taunt himself uh, so he's always uh, protected himself uh, so that he can revive if needed or do his reflexive support uh, which let's get to that part on turn he's gonna heal self for 20 percent of max health he, he's going to apply two deflect and taunt uh, to the highest health hive mind ally. As I said, the, the dispersing the damage. And then if he's charged on turn, he's going to revive a dead symbiote ally. Then he's going to clear charge. Uh, he doesn't have a means of regaining charge uh, in combat. Uh, not from his teammates, not from his own kit. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, that's it. Okay. When this character or a hive mind ally drops below 50% max health, if they have taunt, uh, he's going to have some reflexive support. He will clear taunt and then apply safeguard and two death proof to that character. And then he's going to gain 30% speed bar himself. Uh, the idea is uh, he puts taunt on somebody. Uh, if they fall low, then he pulls the taunt gains speed bar so that his turn comes around and then on turn again he puts taunt on the uh, new highest health uh, so it's like the cycle of him just like dispersing the damage okay that was a lot of hand motion on death on death of a hive mind ally he's gonna gain 25 percent speed bar uh, he's gonna gain 60 percent damage on himself and all hive mind allies None of this is locked to raids, which generally what we see on other teams, they'll do like 30% everywhere, 30% only in raids. So it's 60% everywhere, which is great. And he gives 25% block amount to the team, which compounds with the fact that he has uh, deflects in his kit. Okay. The T4 upgrade adds this line. When an enemy takes damage from bleed, apply plus one deflect up to a maximum of five to self and all hive mind allies five is great um i think this is a very valuable upgrade it's not something you can't live without it's not essential by any means 
but it's uh, it's a valuable upgrade. Um, and it just helps uh, with him being a protector. And then uh, we just talked about him. Uh, he gives additional block amount, so it compounds with that as well. Uh, so this is a, a very nice upgrade. Not necessarily uh, like, like it's, it's not an essential one, so you don't have to rush to do this one. Hello, Athame. Welcome in. Uh, yes, Athame. If yes, that was actually what I was gonna say. Uh, if a character who doesn't have taunt falls below fifty percent, uh, Red Goblin does not react. It's only if the character has taunt. So, um, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, I, I clarified this with them. He, he's not going to gain speed bar or apply or do anything else if if it's a character without taunt. That was a, that took a long time, but it's a long passive with a lot of mechanics. So I hope I was clear with that. All right, uh, let's get to his ultimate. It's on a four turn cooldown, which is great. And then uh, especially considering he gains a lot of speed bar, uh, both b uh, by himself and via Carnage. And all the energy from Gwenim. Uh, this is going to be popping off quite often. Okay, if he does not have trauma, he will transfer two debuffs from each Hive Mind ally to self, excluding stun. Uh, similar to what Lizard and Absorbing Man do. In raids, he will uh, copy those debuffs uh, from self to all enemies. And then he's going to clear... Uh, all debuffs from self and then heal per he, he's gonna heal for 15 and then heal for five per and then he's gonna attack all enemies and for 250 damage plus additional damage per debuff on the pri on oh sorry on buff on himself sorry didn't mean to mislead and then he's gonna apply slow did, did they change it i could have sworn on like when we announced the kits, that was per debuff on the enemy. I'm okay. I'm gonna check this. Yes, yes, it was attack all enemies for damage plus additional damage per negative effect on the primary target. I'm going to um, send a note about this. If, if this is what we're seeing, this is what it is on the uh, live server. But watch out for communication regarding this. They they hotfixed or they changed the kit. Yeah, I think this is bad. Uh, I, will, I will reach out to them about this right after this video. <sighs> okay. <laughs> In raid, prolong the duration of all negative effects on all enemies by one. Apply two re regen to self and all symbiotes. This attack is unavoidable. I love how much unavoidable and undodgeable attacks they put on these uh, Spider-Verse rogues gallery characters. I think it's super fun. Okay, the T4 upgrade adds 70% damage to all targets, which is huge. And then it increases the two debuff transfers from two to five. I think this is... Very, 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 very good. I, I, I'm not going to call it essential, but it is almost there. Because the team doesn't have a lot of cleanse. So going from 2 to 5 is going to really help you. Um, not going to call it essential, but almost. Okay? Very, very high value. Rorix, welcome in. Hello. All right, uh, special. Guys, don't get carried away. We don't know. It might be a mistake. Uh, maybe they will do the thing with... Uh, which one has it? Is it not Shang-Chi? One of them has it where... Is it Agent Venom? They combine... Like, he gets even more damage. Maybe now, because they put this in there, he'll get more damage per debuff on the enemy and buff on self. So, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, slash and burn. Five turn cooldown. 
Uh, attack primary and adjacent for 400% damage. Apply defense down and 2 bleed. In raid, he's also going to apply trauma. Uh, clear all debuffs from self and all allies. And then apply 2 regens to self and all hive mind allies. See, this is the other cleanse on the team. And it clears all of them. This is one of the reasons why I didn't call the other one essential. Uh, but this is on a longer cooldown. Okay? So, I think you do want to have the other one. But, again, not essential. Okay. The T4 upgrade. Uh, the trauma is extended to two turns. And then he heals himself and all allies for 30%. The uh, additional level of trauma is nice, very nice, but it's um, only in raids. Uh, the 30% healing is also very nice. I think this will come into effect more outside of raids than in raids. So uh, it's very high value for outside raids. In raids, it's still very good. I, I'm not going to say, again, essential, but it is... It is up there. It's pretty good. And I think we're going to be using this dude in Crucible a lot this season. So if that's your jam, I would do this. Alright. Goblin Assault. Basic. Attack primary and adjacent. Apply 2 bleed. Gain 2 regens. Apply regen to the most injured hive mind ally. The T4 increases 100% damage to primary and secondary. And then uh, it increases the regen to the injured ally to two regens. This is nice, but it is not essential. Um, if you're swimming in T4s, you might do this. It, it, it'll increase the power of the bleeds, but it's okay. Like, you know, there's a lot of T4s on this team. I would do all of these abilities before this one. <sighs> okay. Uh, we already spent 12 minutes on abilities. I hope that was clear. It, it's a long kit. There's a lot of things going on. We discovered a situation. So I, I know it was long, but that's okay. Okay, let's uh, go into building him. This is the reviver. This is the protector. This character, you want stats on. Uh, so build him as much as you are able and willing to uh my motto is do not overbuild raid teams unless you're trying to sim if you're trying to sim you're probably gonna want gear 18 96 95 plus um if you're not simming you can get away with less so that that's what usually my recommendation goes to um you want at least level 90, uh, gear 16, probably more. Uh, and then if you're going to be using him in Crucible, then you're going to uh, push even more. Um, yeah, like you don't want him dying. And then, yeah, like everybody has different preferences, obviously. So... If you're trying to sim raids, as I said, just as much as possible. And then if you're not simming raids, still, uh, he will make use of all the stats. It's going to protect him. He's, it's going to keep him alive so that he can protect the others and revive if needed. Um, all right. So that was that. Iso classes. Okay. This is interesting. In raids, Raider. In raids, Gwenem wants to be a striker venom always wants to be a striker so that's two strikers three raiders you could possibly accommodate a third striker see how it feels for you um outside of raids i will actually say swap him to a striker and gwen him to either a skirmisher or a raider because um that energy is gone outside of raids, so you don't need Gwenim as a striker anymore. But I think uh, Red Goblin as a striker is going to pull ahead outside of raids. 
Um, as I said, in raids with Carnage plus Void Knight, you might be able to uh, support three strikers, but Venom takes a lot of turns, so uh, to be safe, I'm going to say Raider. Down the line, as you play, maybe you, yeah, you'll find that you prefer uh, the other setup more, but my recommendation is going to be Raider in Raids, Striker outside. Um, and okay, yeah, so that was the recommendation. Now, let me tell you my, what my plan is. One, I was going to buy this character regardless because I want the Nova costume. And now that we know he is going to probably be very prominent in Crucible next season, uh, I'm for sure buying him. I'm still going to only buy the cheapest unlock offer, which is still about $50.00. So three stars. I'm not going to go for a four star unlock um, or four star offer. Uh, three is enough for me. I don't love spending money on the game. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm going to do the bare minimum uh, of what I can to get where I want. Um, beyond that, I actually am out of Hammer Tech. Before we started recording, I was actually pulling orbs to see how much I could get. Uh, I'm only going to be able to get him to gear 16. Uh, my goal would be to have him at least 17 by the start of Crucible Season 6, but probably not going to happen. But uh, over the next uh, three or four days, I will have him at level 95 and gear 16. And then as soon as I get more hammer tech, it's going right into him. Uh, I will put T4s in, let me tell you, I will T4, I'll T4 his ultimate, I will probably T4 his special and passive as well, uh, basic, I don't know, probably not, uh, not even down the line, we'll see, if I, uh, if I get like a huge bounty of T4s, maybe, but not, not in the foreseeable future. Um, but yeah, uh, so the th those three abilities I'm probably going to T4 pretty soon. Uh, ultimate right away. Alright, and then t uh, ISO class, uh, I will, as I said, run him as Raider in Raids and Striker outside. I will have Tier 4 for both of them. And then down the line, if I feel like I like one of them better, I might take that to 5. Or... Um, if I like both, then I'll, I might take both to five, blue five. So we'll see. Uh, I, I like this team. I like this character. This is actually a character that I had heard about or, or like l heard the lore of. And I was like, damn, Carnage plus Green Goblin. That sounds amazing. They would never do such a deep cut character. And here we are. So I'm, I'm very excited that he's here. I'm hype. Uh, I'm going to go in on him build him and I'm looking forward to playing with him all right so that was my plan let's do a quick recap uh, his special ultimate and passive are all very very high value not essential but very high value especially the special and ultimate his basic is skippable it's good but it's skippable as a striker it gets more value because it, it increases the value of his bleeds um, your call. Uh, building wise, he will appreciate all the stats you give him. So go for it uh, as much as you are able and willing to. And then uh, ISO 8 class, Raider in Raids, Striker in Crucible and War. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. It's been a long one, a little bit more complicated than most. But uh, I hope that was clear. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm looking forward to theory crafting with this character and sharing my experience with you guys. I hope to see you in the next one.